hello guys and welcome back to my channel i'm really sorry for my absence this short time it was something i couldn't help but not to worry because i'm back again with another beautiful tutorial on how you can create this lovely two-piece right here you see the beautiful high color it's a crop top as well as a full top so if this is something you would love to make for yourself then stick around with me and watch till the end so guys i am going to be using this three yards of this fabric and it's by 61 inches in length so it's very long for me to do whatever i want to do so i'll be beginning with the cutting of my pine so i'll just fold this fabric into two once it's folded i'll just take my the length of my pint i'm using 48 for my pine i want it to touch the floor then i'll be adding extra one inch for the folding So once that is done, I'll just go ahead to take my crotch lens. I am using 11 and a half for my crotch lens. On the waistline, I'm going to mark 2 inches. And then down, I'm going to mark 1 inch. This is the leg part of this pint. Then on my crotch line, I'm going to mark my time measurements. I'm using 14 inches for my time measurements. So from the 2 inch point that I marked on the waistline, I'm going to be marking my waist from that point. Ending at the 2 inch point and mark that I had. And then the same mark I had on the waistline, I'm going to also do the same mark on the crotch line so that I can link it up with the waist line. This will be my crotch length. And I'll go all by three between three to four inches to for the curve. So I'm just going to be linking from the one point down up until the two inch mark that I had on the waistline, like this. So from the one inch point on the on the leg side of this point, I'm going to be taking the my leg measurements, the circumference down. I am using eight and a half. So I'm going to link it up with a crotch line this way I just pin them down so they stay in place for me to cut So the front part is ready so i'm just going to fold my fabric again and then i'll be placing this already cut front part on this folded fabric again like this making sure that there is an extra two inch allowance down like this it's two inches and then on the crotch line again i'm going to make in one leaving one inch allowance when cutting a pint, make sure that you get the front part right because you're going to use it to draft out or cut out the back part. It's going to be very much easier if the front is correct. So once this is done, I'm going to come down on the waistline for the front part. I'm going to come down by one inch for the waist slant. I'm going to mark one inch and then I'm just going to link it with the side of the front and then I'm just going to slash it away so over to the front part I will fold my fabric into two and then I'll mark four inches away like this Just make a mark and then I'm going to be folding the rest of the fabric to go and meet the 4 inch mark that I just made. This way. So I'll take the length of my top. So use whatever length is comfortable for you. But for this length, I can use this length as a crop top and also as a full top because my pint is a high waist pint. So the next thing to do right now is to take your shoulder measurement. I am using eight for my shoulder measurements, but I added extra half, that is eight and a half. I'll come down for my armhole depth by nine inches. Between eight and a half and nine inches is what I'm going to be using. So the same eight and a half inches I measured on the shoulder, I'm going to measure it at the armhole depth as well. 
so that I'll have a straight line running from the shoulder to the armhole depth. And I'll just make the armhole curve. Then I'll take my bust measurements immediately under the armhole depth and an extra one inch allowance. I'll go to the waist side, I'll measure my waist plus one inch allowance. So for the neck depth, I'm going to come down by one inch. So this one inch depth, depth is going to also run for the back as well. Then the width, I'll be using three and a half for the neck width. For both the back and the front, just that the front is going to be longer and going to be wider because of the wrap. For the shoulder slant, I'll come down by one inch and then I'll link it to the neck like this. So for the wrap side, I'm just going to slash it like a V downwards, like this. Just open it down, just cut it out. There you go. So this is the wrap. This is the front part already. So I'm going to be laying the back part on it like this. And then I'm going to be stitching on this part and on this part as well. So I made, I already cut a strap. I cut a very long strap because I've not measured what length I'm going to be using it for. So once I have joined the shoulder, this is how it is. This is how it's going to look like. So I'm going to be measuring how long the wrap from the front part going through the back neck down to the second part of the wrap at the front. So I'm going to measure the length like this. And then get a strap for that length, 45. So I'd already cut out the strap, ironed it with an ST just to thicken it a little bit for me and then folded the both edges. So this is what I'm going to be using for the open part of the wrap going through the neck as well. So make sure that you have, you're putting in your fabric, the main body of the fabric as much as half of an inch inside of the strap. So I'm going to be stitching on it all the way. Careful because at this point it's going to be tricky and this fabric is very weak. It's not hard at all. So you have to be very careful with it as you follow all through with it. So take your time and don't be in a hurry at this point because this one can really mess the whole of your effort. And then I'm going to stitch on it all the way. Once that is done, this is what it looks like. I'm going to have to join the sides together. The both sides, I joined them together. I would already neatly dressed this front part as well. So this strap is going to be running underneath and also going to be serving as the strap that will tie either at the back or at the front however you wish to so this folding is to get the middle point so that we can lay it together with the mid part of the strap so that's the middle that we just marked so this part that I joined together for the strap is going to serve as the midpoint as well so I'm just going to link it middle to middle good sides to good sides and then I will sew all the way Once I'm there, I'm going to fold at one edge and flip it over to the other side and also continue the sewing. Also for the strap part, I'm going to hold the both edges together and then I'm just going to stitch on it as well down to the very last edge of it. For the hand, I'm just going to dress the hand at the edge and then attach it to the body. I'm just going to fold it like this and then stitch on it and then do the same for the second hand. After then, join them together and attach it to the body of our top. So this is what the result looks like. The sleeves have been joined, the straps have been attached, the neck has been joined as well. Everything has been neatly done and ironed. This is the end result of this top, so I hope you like it. So follow for more because the pint part is still coming out. So for the pint part, for the crotch line, I'm going to mark 7 inches. This is going to be for the zipper. 
so i made a video to this effect already i'll be leaving a link in the description so you can go watch it out so for this side part of the pint as well i'm going to be also marking seven inches for the pocket length the seven inches at this point is for the pocket length so i'm going to be showing you how you can attach your pocket as well So I'm going to be marking one and a half on the waist side. So I'm going to iron this one and a half down to the other side, the wrong side, this way, running through to where I just made a mark on the both sides of the pine. So after ironing it, this is what it looks like. This is one part of it. Then I'll just spread it open and then cut it out. So I'll lay it on a fabric, good size to good size, on a plain fabric. So from the point downwards, I'm going to mark four and a half inches. That's going to be the depth of the pocket. Then I'll pin it down to hold it and cut this part out of it. So the next thing is to stitch on this part. I'm going to be flipping it over. Look at the way I am flipping it. So I'll just adjust it carefully so this is it this is good side to good side this is odd sides to odd sides so I'm going to be cutting on this part you can see that the part that we cut out we've gained it back again so remember that we marked out a four and a half inch that's the point that we just cut out underneath so the width of this pocket is 8 inches so when you open it inches are 16 inches and then the length is 12 and a half after stitching this is what you're going to see after stitching i went to, to iron it then i'll just spread it out like this this is the pocket side of the spine at this point if you don't understand what i'm doing i would advise you to just carefully watch me because by watching you might get a clearer understanding of what i'm trying to do so we'll form the pocket right here You can see that the part that we cut out is not really cut out we've gained it back again so that's the part right here that the back is going to be joining on so we're not going to leave the base part of our pocket empty we'll need to close it but instead of just going out to close it that way i'll hold it this way to the right side of this fabric then i'll just head over to the sewing machine and sew it thereby closing this loop downwards after stitching i'm going to be showing you how it looks like turn it to the wrong side as usual and then here you go your pocket is ready so I'm just going to hold it down with pins so I will just go to the machine and hold it down properly this way and then on the waistline as well so this is a pocket it's formed and it's ready so i've joined the two pockets i've made the two pockets on the front part of the pine so this is what it looks like so for the zip part of this pine i'm not going to be showing it in this video i already made a video illustrating how that is done so i'll leave a link in the description so i've attached the zipper i've attached the pocket the front part of this pine is ready this is the zip right here so check the link in my description if you're wondering how to make one for yourself then for the back part i went ahead and i joined the back part as well so i'm just going to be attaching it to the front like this i'm going to be closing all of the sides close the side seams all the way down to the leg part of the trousers So I'll basically close every part of this pint that needs to be closed and then we have our pint. So I join all of the parts of this pint together can see the leg this is the sides 
this is the body of the leg this is the down part not so big but big enough for my leg to pass through and it's long enough for me this is the waistband i'd go ahead to attach a waistband as well so the only thing left right now is a button or a hook a trouser hook whichever one i want at the moment and then this is the zip part so with this we've come to the end of this tutorial let me know what you think in the comments below and also in the description i'll be leaving a link to some videos that you might be interested in and at the top right side of your screen i'll be leaving another link to a video that you might like and if you're here to subscribe to my channel please go ahead and hit the subscribe button turn on the bell icon so you are notified every time i upload a new video and also don't forget to like my videos see you in my next video bye